Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Just something uh, pretty interesting for you to check out. This is a 3 watt LED, 12 volts, 60 or 50 hertz, really doesn't matter. Uh, works on DC pretty well. Uh, it says 310 milliamps uh, for 12 volts. That comes out to uh, 3.72 watts consumed. Anyway, I broke the little wire off right here after soldering it and bending it a few times. The cool thing about it is I have it hooked up to this side of the heat sink right here, this little wire. The negative I got coming down, I just shoved it in the end of the negative over here. Well, I broke it off. But anyway, so this uh, meter right here is reading the same voltage that the LED has. And the wind turbine isn't quite up to uh, charging voltage. It's just kind of freewheeling out there. I'm going to hold this on here and I'm going to cut off the other light. It runs all the way down to uh, about 5.65 volts. Well, there we go. I went ahead and filed. Just cut the light there. I went ahead and filed this one side here. Kind of hard to give you a view of it on the camera without an extra deal there. Filed the side and put another solder joint on it. And since I don't have the fixture, bend the wire itself. Not up to the bulb. Slide this inside. You can see I've got four slits here and four slots over here that I cut in the PVC here. And I've got that two tie wraps wrapped around three times. There we go. Right now, I'm just going to keep twisting this tie wrap till it gets up to the other end. I'm going to start to put a little bit on the bulb. And it should clamp it in. I'm going to clamp it to where the whole end sticks out and about an eighth inch. There we go. Yeah, that tie wrap got real loose right there. That's still loose. I carved the holes a little bit wide right there to make sure that they would fit. All right, now I had a pair of needle nose here. Who stole my needle nose? Probably me. <laughs> as soon as I find another pair, I see where my other ones are. They're on the floor. There we go. Tighten my tie wraps up by cinching them. Grab it right up close to the head and give it a turn. And it pulls the next, the next notch in. That should be pretty tight. And it is. That's pretty good. Now I've got it set up. Uh, and the wind is picked up, and we're not going to get to see the effect. It kind of strobes a little bit. Let's go see outside, see if it actually shows the wind turbine. I've got plenty of length. I've got about 30 feet on this. Well, there's the wind turbine without it, and it's just slowed down enough, and it's starting to blink. I'll get a little bit of a strobing effect on the blades, showing where each of the power is at, and it went back down again. So this is what I was trying to show you. We are in infrared right here. <laughs> really picks up nice. I'll have to analyze this film when I get home. I think that's pretty sharp. Yeah, I can put it right out in front here. Looking pretty good. I see certain parts of the blades that show up in one spot. I know it blinks. It stays pretty good. I imagine it's got a resistor network in there and uh, it doesn't matter the polarity on these like most diodes. I imagine it's got a, uh, a rectifier inside it. That's pretty sharp. Oh, by the way, I put this back up, and I'll do video in the daytime about it, show you more. I shoved the light in the back end, made marks where those two notches were on the uh, treadmill, mo on the uh, tape drive motor. Stuck a screw in the side, one behind it, and I don't think I'm going to have any problems with this for a while. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Whee! Here's without it. Here's with it. Here's without it. Here's with it. Gotta love it. I'll leave it up on the roof here. See how good I can see it from a distance. I might go ahead and leave that light up on the roof. Well, that's pretty good. If I can see it from the ground, looks like I got a nice big light on it. And I know I'm only kicking 3 watts, 310 milliamps. This is on the diode side, the wind turbine side of the diode. So it's really not affecting the charge going in. And less than one third of an amp. That's not bad. It's a drop in the bucket for this thing. And the battery keeps the voltage down even though it's going through the diode. So I imagine it sees at top maybe 14 volts. So that's not too bad. And I believe it's weatherproof. I might just put me a sign on the tail over here. Make the tail a little bigger and put green wind and other home energies on it. Help for a little bit of advertising and get this thing going. 
those little holes in the end are so I can hear it inside the shop. I never did fill them in and make this thing completely quiet. It also keeps people away from it. They don't want to get close to it. So yeah, as long as the wind's blowing, I don't think they're going to steal it. <laughs> I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind. Another home energy. Many good things to you and yours. Oh yeah, gotta love it. Who else put the mud man be up on a ladder and go behind the ladder? Just for you, man. Just for you. <laughs> gotta love it. Hmm, I kinda like the tube. That's pretty neat. Abra cut Yeah. <laughs> cut this other light off, see what kind of light it gives in here. That's uh, really not too bad. Looking at the voltage. Yeah, I can see everything pretty good now. It's not too bad. It's fixing to flicker out. Wind dies down a little bit, it starts flickering. That's when it's getting... ...do about six... Yep. Got down below six volts. About 5.65, she'll start picking right back up. That's what I wanted to show you. Let me see if I can get this in a position where it actually allows us to read the meter. That's pretty good. I could leave this on 24-7. I don't think it would affect my battery banks at all. And I think it's pretty neat. The people down in uh, the basement or in their uh, electrical room that have to bring in flashlights to see. This bulb was only about $11. I got one. I think I got this one at Home Depot. It might have been Lowe's, but I, yeah, it was Home Depot. But anyway, this bulb was only $11. Really not that bad. Make a nice little holder like this. You can mount it and have it set anywhere you want. You don't have to buy the thing. Just go ahead and solder your wires on there. And Run some heat shrink, a few pieces of tie wrap on the end, and that'll take care of it. Looking at 13.3. I guess we're putting amps in. Not too bad. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this hooked up and see how it does for a couple of days. I know I got some 15 to 25 mile an hour winds with 30 mile an hour gusts that ought to change quite a bit. Anyway, what I was reading before was 5.65 when it finally just flickered out. So, I think it's pretty neat. Just doesn't want to die out. <laughs> the wind's fixing to pick up, and I know this meter's going to start slamming again. The charge controller will go back into operation. So far, it looks like I got plenty of battery. By the way, the futon lighting really makes it a lot better for doing videos, especially when I put on the fluorescent lamp. It's a lot closer than the one up there on the ceiling, way up there. And gives me a lot better light and I don't have to do a bunch of editing and grainy uh, looking videos. I'm kind of liking it. I ought to check the battery voltage and see what the battery voltage is doing. So I just take this from here and clip it to here. That ought to give me everything I need. My batteries are at 12.58 going up and down. The amp meter starting to jump up. 12.8, 12, 13.16. Mm. By hitting about five amps, maybe six. Yep, the wind is picking up. It's about to kick on the dump load. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you, notice this voltage is a little bit higher than, we're looking at 14.3, 14.5, and this is staying on, saying it's about to go to a, a dump. It hasn't quite yet. Why? Because the voltage drop on the diode here. The diode drops uh, 0.7 volts. It isn't quite the same reading. There'll be a different uh, reading on the other side of the diode. I'll go ahead and we'll look at the meter. The meter saying 13.7, 13.8, and 14. Kick it on the battery side here. And we're looking at 13.14. See, it's quite a bit of difference. This is the actual battery voltage. By the way, I made a few little modifications right here behind the tie wraps after I pushed it forward without a co uh, with a coat hanger and got it to exactly where I wanted. I put some drops of super glue down all four cracks quite a bit. And I went ahead and shoved the wires into the cracks up to where they got real tight. Put a tie wrap on this side and on this side. One other thing, cut them a little bit long and then go ahead and hit the ends with your lighter and these ends are no longer sharp. Well, I'm back inside the Jeep now. Pretty windy and getting pretty cold. I'm about ready to leave. And I went ahead and ran the wires, put a fuse, and set her up on the wind turbine. <laughs> I'll be able to see it from the road at night now. Not too bad. There's the lights, uh, the lawn lamps in front of the shop. And you can see inside the shop those little dots are those flashlight heads. Not that bright compared to that. <laughs> 
I'm lucky. Well, I got everything in from outside, fixing to go. One last look at this, and one last note to uh, bring into focus. That light, when this wind turbine dies, that light goes out, and the batteries are still at the voltage regulator. If I put one more diode in series with the light, that'll drop the voltage down to what the battery voltage is. We might do that a little bit later, but for now I'm going to leave this out here, a little bit of advertising. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, another home energy. Many good things to you and yours. Yeah.